Hey everybody, uh, Dr. Rick here dropping in on you. Hope everybody is doing well. Look, um, I want to first of all remind you, we are in the middle of a fundraiser for Black Men Lead, which started out solely as a rite of passage initiative for young black males from age four to 13. Uh, we have since developed it into a full service suite for young black males from ages 4 to 30. Uh, and it extends beyond that if we find men that need it, but we focus on that group uh, for a couple of specific reasons. Uh, but we provide everything from the rite of passage to uh, mental health <coughs> resources, which is extremely important right now because uh, of the spike in suicides a young, among young black males. <coughs> There's definitely been an increased, excuse me. <clears throat> and we provide a, n a number of other wraparound services that work to um, help improve the state of black manhood as a whole, something that is immensely uh, important when we're talking about uh, the empowerment of black people in the US. So please look in the description box and click the link. Uh, after I finish having a, having this conversation with you, or this uh, putting this putting putting forth this monologue, I'm hoping that you will see the need even more uh, for this work. But we're going to talk about something that's front and center. It's hot. Everybody's finding it funny and talking about it, and it's it's. Well, excuse the glare. Of course, the glare would come in. That's a better. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Everybody's talking about what Kanye West is doing and the links that he's going to, uh, quote unquote, to support and supposedly save his family and get uh, his wife back. The first part of that is he's, he was in a space he shouldn't have been in in the first place, but that's not why I'm here. I'm here because what seems like antics and throw it off behavior is not funny. Here's why it's not funny. It is textbook behavior for someone who is capable of doing something or causing something to happen that can't be taken back. Uh, in my line of work, I deal with a lot of domestic abuse uh, survivors. Um, I also deal with a lot of black males with the proclivity for violence, uh, thus the work with the black man lead and so much more. Uh, what I can tell you is this guy is threatening violence against his soon to be ex-wife's new interests, if that's really what it is. Um, uh, he has the exposure, the reach, and the capacity to mobilize people. Uh, he is presenting as an extreme narcissist. Uh, he is in and out of moves where, okay, I'm gonna do this, now. I'm just kidding, and all this. And people are looking at it and going, man, this dude's throwing off, this dude's crazy, this dude's right away. And it's, it's laughable on the surface. The problem is this guy is presenting in traditional classic form the behavior of a malignant narcissist who can't have their way you know you got all types of narcissists and that's even some forms of good narcissism because at some level you got to look out for yourself you got to care about yourself uh on the string extreme end of the spectrum though is all kind of antisocial, uh violent destructive and unacceptable and inappropriate behavior uh, he's definitely operating in that. And this isn't even about Kim. I'm not a Kardashian fan. Have, never have been, never saw. Outside of whatever was on that tape that I never saw. Uh, what actually, somebody became famous for something and then made their fame. Their mother, using her genius, made the family famous. And they're literally famous for being famous, get paid for being famous. I mean, bring, and don't get me wrong, whatever they're doing, whatever, I, I remember Kim doing some things that helped out some, some black sisters, 
who were incarcerated and a couple of black brothers. I have no problem with all that, but I'm not a fan of Kim. So I'm not here caping for Kim. I'm here caping for what's right and what could be, you know, a serious situation. Um, <clears throat> and there are people out there that are what you would call genuine fans. And I don't mean that in a good way. The word fan is short for fanatic. A fanatic is radical in their admiration of someone. That's where it normally came from. And then it became a pretty cool little thing to say, I'm a fan. What you mean is I'm a fanatical man. I'm like really, really here, you know. Uh, fanatics have a tendency to want to be connected. And there is more than one person out there who are fanatics when it comes to Kanye. And they will act because Kanye is in distress or he's presenting himself as being in distress. And what he's having is, uh, what it seems like to me, uh, he's on the cliff of some, some form of a psychotic break, which makes him potentially dangerous. But what makes this even more dangerous <clears throat> is the fact that other people may act on his prompting whether he feels like he's doing it on purpose i know there was one post where i saw was something where he was saying hey look don't do don't worry about doing nothing i'm gonna do it myself those things have to be taken uh, seriously and i think that there was one post where i saw where he's actually posting where kim sent him a text message and told him what he's doing is dangerous and he could get somebody hurt because people will literally act on his distress and so he came back and said hey look the wife said don't do that so i'm gonna handle it myself but he's talking about hurting this dude uh again i have no hearts in the uh in the race when it comes to this guy, uh, whoever he is. You know, I know who he is, I've seen him. Um, he's, he is who he is, but I'm looking at the biggest scheme of thing. There are kids involved here. More importantly, there's just so much that's, that can come out of this wrong. Number. And so this is not how you want a black male presenting if you're a black man and you see somebody out there, but you know, again, we're gonna have black men that aren't gonna do the right thing, but I'm here because I don't think it's funny. Whether you like Kim or not, whether if you don't, you, whether you, whether you care if something bad happens to her or not, this isn't a thing to be laughing about. This isn't a thing because, see, right today it's her, but far too often it's one of our sisters, and this isn't funny, and so. Somebody in his camp should be talking to him. But see, when, when you, you claim in billionaire status and you move it like that, I don't know a whole bunch of people in his camp. Now, there are some billionaires who have other billionaires or extremely wealthy people in their camp that are there to hold them accountable so that they don't get too full of themselves. And that is important. But the people that I see around him are nowhere close to his level as far as wealth. And so they see him as an opportunity. And they're more and more uh, focused and uh, concerned about the opportunity than they are his well-being. But somebody really needs to suggest that he deals with his mental health issues, which he admittedly has. Um, you know, like I said, this has, to me, nothing to do with Kim, but has everything to do with this whole thing with black men, violence, and mental health. We are doing a very poor job of bringing this to the forefront and dealing with it. It is negatively impacting black women and black children. And I'm not getting into the whole race thing about what his children are or anything like that. What I am saying, this is a black man in crisis and everybody's getting their kicks and their laughs off of it until it's not funny. And to me, it's not funny now because I know what's possible and coming if somebody doesn't get on this. And we have this happening far too often. 
That's why it's important to give to black men lead. That's why it's important because see what happens is when we don't take care of our sons, they kill our daughters. And I don't think we get that. This isn't just about black boys out there killing each other. You got daughters out there. Whether you're a mom or a father, you got daughters out there. They're going to meet up with these guys, and no matter how much you train them or how you teach them, at, at, at some point, there's going to be this point where they want the bad guy. And then he might not even present as a bad guy. He may present as a very nice guy, and he may actually have a bunch of nice characteristics, but you don't know where he's at. You don't know what he's gone through. You don't know what will trigger him. You don't know what will take him to a dark place. And he didn't get the treatment. He didn't get the care and the, and, and, and the resources he needed to deal with whatever has him in that space. So he's just there, a ticking time bomb, waiting to go off. And it happens to be when your daughter's with him. We are going to have to do a better job of providing our black men and black boys with the proper tools to deal with the stress and the trauma that we pretend we don't have. You can say I'm good all you want to. The soul, the spirit, the mind, the body is not telling that story. And eventually it's going to get to a point where there's nothing that can happen. It's going to explode. And this whole thing with Kanye and Kim and the kids and all that, you may feel for him. You may feel like he actually has a valid point, you know. But my thing is, I'm real big when it comes to being an advocate for black men seeing their kids. And I have a reason for that. I was a single father for a long time, but I've also had the game of keep away play with me. And I know how that feels, especially when I'm nothing but a good father. Hell, I've got kids that were children of people I was with that I took as my own who still call me dad years later. They're in their 30s. And I still parent them. I love great rearing, rearing uh, children. And I've never hurt one. So to, to, to keep a kid from me, that was, no, that was no reason for it. And then I end up rearing uh, my kids as a single father. But, so I'm, I'm an advocate for uh, black men seeing their kids, but not when they're on the edge of a break, not when they're unpredictable and volatile, not when they've been hurling threats. That is not a point when... Um, I think that you need to be focused on seeing your kids. You need to be focused on getting healthy. You need to be focused on getting better and, and, and being the best that you can possibly be so you can truly parent. If you want to understand, he's great with the kids, but th that's just it. Do you want those kids to be in a situation where they see their dad go off the deep end and hurt somebody or get hurt? And so all of these things are at play. And I see it far too often. Like I say, I'm dealing with people that are coming out of domestic abuse situations. Uh, some who are still trying to escape them and ma properly managing that. And that is extremely important. And so I am just saying, hey, be careful how you hype this up, how many times you share this because the bigger and more viral it becomes, the more dangerous it becomes. And finally, show some love and support the work we're doing at the Odyssey Project, especially with the work we're doing right now with Black Man Lee. That's my, uh, my call and that's my request. Show some love. On that note, I'm out of here.